Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Brad Holloman with Fort and Tablada. As a lifelong resident of this wonderful parish, it's, it's my privilege to own a business and raise a family here in Livingston. We at Fort Nablata are honored to be part of this vibrant business community and contribute to its success through our engineering and land surveying projects. It's my pleasure today to introduce to you a man that embodies the spirit of leadership and commitment to his community. Please help me in welcoming Parish President Randy DeLatt. When you look across this room and you see it's packed, this is the biggest compliment you can give an elected official. It means you care. Everything is going to be perfect in Liston Parish. That's what this address is going to tell you. But this address is also going to tell you that hard work is going to be entailed in making this uh, go forward. Uh, I'm a person that believes in detail. Uh, having said that, my wife was responsible for bringing the, the stool for me to step on, and I don't see it. <laughs> But I can't see over the podium, and I'm, I'm gonna, before we get started with the parish, I wanna tell you a little something. I try my best every day, and I look at these people, and you deserve that, and you, and you deserve much more. I'm a history buff, so I look at things in the past because I feel like that's an indicator of telling you what the future's gonna be. And I, I believe it takes a strong leader for Lipston Parish to go to the next step. And I got the qualifications of an uh, infamous leader and a famous leader. The infamous leader was Jimmy Hoffa. The famous leader, the famous leader was the guy during World War II, just went blank. <laughs> I'll think his name in a minute. Everybody's got to know him. Uh, him and Eisenhower, Franklin D. Roosevelt, they were the heroes in World War II. He's from England. I'll think about it in a minute. But the reason I went brain dead and researched these people is we all three of us have something in common. They all was able to bring masses, the way that Trump does it, into any political event they had. Now, Hoffa, like I said earlier, he was uh, infamous, but he was five foot four. I'm five foot five. So the three <laughs> leaders that I'm talking about, we all have the same thing, uh, qualities, and that's the shortness of height. So supposedly there's a study in, uh, in Oxford, not Mississippi, <laughs> that says that uh, the shorter you are, the bigger your brain is. So I hope that's true. <laughs> but did all that batter to get to here. Guys, you want to know what's going on in the parish. That's what you want to do. Before I go in there, I want to tell you my second address is going to be much better than my first. I have to learn, okay? But we, we campaigned for a year and a half. Uh, everyone knows what our problems were. Everyone knows, but how are we going to fix those problems? I got to tell you, we got a good group of people working in that direction. But I'm going to start with animal control. We said all during the campaign that this was an issue, a parish-wide issue, was an issue that needed attention. We said we was going to add $1 million to the budget, and we did that, guys. We added $1 million to the budget, but we also demolished and rebuilt 26 kennels that can now house additional uh, animals. In addition to that, we equipped an animal control truck to go out there and collect these pets. We also hired five additional employees. We also, through a generous, generous donation through Air Products, has got a community cat program open hospital. Okay, when I'm reading off <laughs> the paper. Basically what we've done is put a hospital together to spade and noodle cats. Now, the cat population may not be as important as the dog population, but it's a population that people didn't see because they out in the wild. They, you don't really see those, but there, there is a need for that. So we're going to spade and neuter cats free of charge. That's what we have done so far in animal control. But that's not enough, guys. There's still animals out there. So we believe we have hired an architect for a new animal shelter. This shelter is going to cost $3 million. The architect has already designed the work and the engineer has already done the engineering work. We 
through the generosity of the town of Livingston and Mayor JT, we have secured the property for this new shelter. And I'm telling you, we're on our way to doing the first thing we said we was going to do is solve the animal control problem in Livingston Parish. So that's a win, and that's how we're going to start this off, okay? Transparency. We kept saying it's got to be transparency. People's got to know what's going on. That's why you're here today. The transparency, we attacked it by having town hall meetings throughout the parish, which we continue to do as we speak now. We made social media improvements. We are... We are putting our successes and our failures out there, and we leave it for the general public to shoot holes in it, because some things we're doing right and some things we're not doing right. And we need you to continue to shoot holes when it needs to be shot holes, and give those workers that's doing their best, give them your gratitude when they're out here in the seat doing those things. We attend all council meetings as the charter prescribes. But I'm going to tell you the biggest thing that i got to say by transparency is we created a parish president's advisory committee made up of 15 diverse people throughout this parish. And this is being headed up by Ms. Eileen uh, McCall, who's uh, the chairman of this organization. They meet monthly, and they don't just meet and talk about the bull or talk about somebody's ditching these digging up. We can't, what they do is try to have a long range plan for us moving forward that all the parish can buy in. And look, we can think of 10 or 12 things that we need to do right away, but unless you study those things and make sure you do them in the correct sequence, they can be an uh, opportunity to fail. We don't want to fail. We've been failing. We want to move forward. This group brought in just yesterday, and like I said, they meet every, every month. They brought in the state legislative delegation, which I'm going to say some few things about my heroes over there after a while. But they brought these people in to help give them ideas of what we've got to do to set the priorities to move forward. And, and to me, that's part of the transparency. Citizens of our parish get to, to say what they want to see and do and change. It's not what Granny Delat wants, it's what these citizens need, and I'm here to give them their needs. Everybody, if you see the, uh, the sequence I'm going into, everybody said, okay, animal control was important, transparency was important. What's more important than drainage, y'all? There's nothing that could be more important than drainage. We have already received a $5 million grant to have our first master drainage plan. We already advertise how the engineer that is working on this master drainage plan. Hopefully when next year comes, we're going to know exactly what floods Livingston Parish and how we're going to combat, combat that flood. That's a huge, huge win. Another win for our administration is we were able to, um, I get in trouble using words that I make up, guys, evaporate it, <laughs> evaporate it. But we were able to manipulate the budget and get $5 million to permit the dredging of Amit River. That came from citizens' tax dollars that live here. We are started that process through Elos and uh, Forte and Tablada. We don't know how long this process to permitting Amit River is going to take, but we do feel great because of our congressional delegation, which is uh, Senator Kennedy, Senator Cassidy, uh, Congressman Graves, and uh, who else it was in there? I left out, it was four of us there. Letlo. Julie Letlow, thank y'all so much, guys. Julie Letlow. This congressional delegation and senators have met with us, with the Colonel for the Corps of Engineers, and they understand that 1950 is the last time this has been dredged, and 2016, we haven't made enough improvements in that drainage basin to keep us from flooding again. So this is a high priority for this administration, and we have put all our heart and soul in getting this river dredged. <clears throat> we also was able to uh, secure a grant for $15 million to desnag waterways in the Amit River Basin and culverts on I-12. That work just got bitted out uh, I think this past week, it's going to be up to the council to, um, 
to approve this or not uh, at their next council meeting. In addition to that, we have a $25 million drainage project on the west side of 63. That's culvert replacements and channel improvements. Now, when I say LMI, that means low to moderate income. So that money can only be used at certain locations. And if you don't fill your census out, it affects where that money can be used or not. So that's just a heads up. All these things I talk about is great, great, but some of them is going to take time to happen. The two greatest things that I think is going to happen is that we have Miss Cindy O'Neill hired, who used to be a former DO, I mean a FEMA um, liaison to DOTD, and she had brought a lot of experience with FEMA. We are trying to get back into the community rating system, the CRS. That potentially lowers our insurance rates. So we have to get back in that, and we have made great uh, success in that, and I'm not going to get into the weeds of all what she's done. But our congressional delegation has also worked alongside with her on updating flood maps. When we update these flood maps, some's going to have their flood risk reduced and won't be required to have the insurance unless they want to have the insurance. So these are tax dollars, that, or your dollars, not tax dollars, that can stay in your pocket and your parish, and this is what this administration is doing, is trying to put those dollars back. And we, we feel pretty good about what Miss Cindy has brought to the table and what we're gonna do with the insurance and the flood maps. Captain Outlay. <clears throat> Captain Outlay, we've got four bridges being worked right now, Lot Stafford Bridge, Hood Road, Burgess Road Bridge, and Wildwood Drive. We uh, got 20, miles of road improvement towards um, overlay, patchwork, and sealer. The, par uh, the parish council has approved this work at the last uh, meeting before last. That's going to be 140 parish roads. Uh, one of the things in capped outlay is that the corners doesn't really have a budget that's sufficient enough for him to run his office and his building. The previous administration had committed some money to build a new corner's office, and that was a home run. That was a good deal. Uh, the problem there is it went over $60,000 of budget, and we're in the process of trying to mitigate that. But what the corner's office is going to do for us, y'all, instead of going outside the parish for autopsies, we can do it inside the parish. That's a savings for lifts the parish money, uh, uh, citizens for their money, tax dollars. They also be able to do autopsies for other parishes, which could even be a uh, revenue generator. And those are the things that we're working on in capped outlay. Capped outlay, we're also gonna have a capped outlay budget for the first time next year. I've never been able to present a budget yet. Um, my first budget I present will be in uh, October of this year, and we're gonna have a capped outlay budget also. Little abatement, guys. Everybody needs, when they start off, they need that that easy or that push or whatever it takes to get you going. The little abatement, we, we hired a director for our first little abatement director who has created a buzz throughout the parish. We had a free dump day where we collected 180 tons of, of garbage. We um, met with the lieutenant governor to get some uh, additional money to make this go. I want to tell you what, we, in the past, if someone had gotten in a little bit of trouble, whatever it was, and they had community service work, they had nowhere else to do their community service work. It's my understanding that it's 24 hours state law says when you got community service work, you got to spend 24 hours of it picking up litter. So I want to tell you what these 319 volunteers, 2,096 uh, volunteer hours at a 50, the state has a formula where they say how much, uh, and I forget what it is per hour, but it was $57,409 of volunteer hours that was there. So there's two things that this created, y'all. Some of these guys or women come out to do their volunteer uh, service, and they bring their whole family. And so you got five people picking up instead of one. That's the pride you see. And that comes from Ms. Linda Gardner, and I appreciate that. 
as accessible as we are on a letter of abatement, I feel LOSEP is going to be the shining star of our parish. We hired a new director there, Chris Anderson. The training that has been going on for the past seven months has been second to none. We've been told by everyone in the state how we're being proactive. We secured grant money to improve the OEC. We meet continuously with the school board concerning things that will be coming up, whether it's gonna be shelter openings, using their buildings, or anything we could provide them or they provide us. We met with two of our best, I wanna call you corporate sponsors, even though you're not a corporate sponsor, and I'm gonna call your name out, but Energy and Demco has done a lot for our parish. They, the only two utility operators we got for electricity, and every time you need them, they're here to do for our parish. Now, do they get beat up like all us politicians get beat up? Let the electricity go out and say they get beat up. But I want to say something. We have been proactive in our training. We've been proactive in our sites that we have selected. We've been proactive on our staging. We have been proactive in our mock drills. We have done a lot of things in the EOC, and I'm very proud of Chris Anderson and his group for doing those things. Environmental, guys, and I'm trying to touch as, as quick as I can. It's more environmental than WIC and, and injections. There's been 2,050 restaurants and facility inspections by environmental to make sure your food is safe to eat and your bathrooms are clean and things of those nature. There's been 700 new sewer applications by environmental, 550 new system vertifications, 300 site visits, 100 water well inspections, and about 2,000 complaints and, uh, investigated and abated. And John Coward is in this audience today. And I, that's him back there. I wish you'd stand up for me, John. John's, John's dad, John's dad used to be there before John came here. And we always said, since Miss Sibley left, Mr. Coward left, we felt there's been a big gap for the last eight, 10 years. John's came in and closed that gap, and we're back to being responsible to the people. And I'll make you this promise right here. Call your councilman if they're not, not picking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm picking. Grants, we are administrating over 100 grants right now. That's over $200 million in grants. That's what makes Livingston Parish go forward. That's the budget, y'all. We get $20 million from the one cents or three quarter cents sales tax. So that money is, is what you use to cap the outlay, overlay roads, do ditching, do public works work. But that money can't be used for a compliance officer. That money can't be used if you got a complaint about someone's grass is high or unsafe living conditions or whatever it is. So that money is very, very, very tight. We currently have three compliance officers. We need to double that, guys. I just don't have in the budget now. But that is one of the biggest things that we have to do to make sure we get something done. We have elevated, uh, that's not just this year, is it? We, we have elevated over 400 homes. I, I got to believe that's through the past administration also. We, we haven't elevated that many here through the hazard mitigation and the flood mitigation assistant programs. Permits, uh, up to July was 1,922 permits. Uh, that was in 23, and everybody says, you know, we, we're not doing as many permits. Things are falling down. We got that moratorium. So last year it was 1,922. You know what it is so far this year? 3,086. Livingston Parish is growing, guys. They're not slowing down. We just got to make sure that there's no adverse in, um, effects over there. The downsides of this, guys, if there's a downsize, was I don't see commercial. Commercial has only been 33 new commercials. I've got a few things I skip, and I will answer some questions if uh, Ms. April says I have time. I don't remember talking about public works. DPW. D DPW, guys, <clears throat> takes the brunt of all the, 
all the criticism because that's what the people see out there. Bad roads, uh, drainage, probably not so good. DPW took a task on, and that task was to modernize the office and to contract work out. And the early, early information we got back on, on this is this is working, and I'll tell you what we're doing. We bought some new equipment by selling some old surplus equipment that stayed broke all the time. If a piece of equipment costs you more to keep it running than what the value of that equipment is, you need to get rid of it. We've made that through Miss Melissa Jones, our inventory uh, director, has made those uh, calls and we got that taken care of. So we have a new inventory control director that has gotten rid of surplus equipment that is costing us money and we bought new equipment. Not a whole lot, I think it was three pieces, but <laughs> we bought new equipment. In addition to that, we put GPS units in every piece of equipment and every truck that the parish has. And I'll admit this, I don't have it. I'm known as one. But I'm, I'm told that it's coming. So, But the GPS units, people could see on it. We have uh, monitors throughout the office buildings. I think there's two or three monitors in the office building that I'm in. There's monitors in the office buildings where uh, Public Works is in and, and also where uh, I don't... Uh, I think Chris and them's got monitors. Yes, and EOC also has monitors. So all those people have monitors to look at their employees to make sure their employers didn't have any problems, whether it be truck or heat strokes or parking underneath a shady tree or knocking off a lunch at 11 o'clock. Those things we feel like we got a good handle on. So those GPSs are well worth it. There was only $20 to install and for us to monitor so per month. So that was a good deal. The software updates, the MGO that we made to our computers is gonna allow us to have all our agencies combine their information together. And when I say that, I'm talking about parish government agencies and EOC, Public Works, Permit, and uh, Drainage District. Any of those would be able to, in addition to having all that same information layered we also going to have that information that would be available to the public. So I was talking about <clears throat> exactly what DPW did. They did 192,553 feet, linear feet of ditching. That's 38 miles, 36 miles. They also did 22,117 lateral ditching. That's off road. That's four miles. They also did 2,900 and nine footage of culverts that was installed. They completed 396 debris work orders. I want to talk a little bit, I probably should have said this in debris and I'm skipping around a little bit. As great as the success was for the trash pickup day, it also showed us our shortcomings. We don't have the opportunity to get rid of our bulk waste, whether it's a refrigerator or whether it's some furniture or whatever it's gonna be. If it didn't fit in your garbage can, you don't get rid of it. We have our contracts already signed by the previous administration, but the, the waste management has, has been in talk with this administration to modify the contract, and I can't say a whole lot of different things, but I think you're gonna get some re relief when the first year gets here, the first of the year gets here. We should be able to announce that in two weeks. Uh, corporate for, has to okay on it, but I think we're gonna be able to get some relief for you at no cost to you, and that's what we need to do. Uh, I wanna talk about the use of the words I said evaporated. And that was, looking back on it, probably a poor choice of words, guys. <laughs> Uh, I want to make a statement on it, and I, I got it written down, so I have to read it and make sure I didn't say it wrong. But basically, the public here in our parish, along across the state, has taken a very big, big interest in this, and we've taken a lot of ribbon based on me using the word evaporated. So what I've been told, the proper terminology is there are no missing funds. That's the proper, there are no missing funds to our knowledge. There are no missing funds. 
it was a FEMA reimbursement that was received and that and this adjustment should have been made was not made an estimate on anticipated funds from the state for reimbursement of our 10 percent match on disaster related grants was recorded in prior years however the full amount was not received so to maintain the past records due to the passage of time with no reimbursement received this amount is considered uncollectible at this time so maybe uncollectible is a better word than evaporated and the last thing i have to say on this this is in the hands of the legislative auditor and when he makes his uh report then i think this gets put to rest but i want to say one more time i don't think i I really believe it is a bookkeeping issue and it's not 2.5 million misspent or missing. I, I think the explanation was a great explanation. Having said this, guys, we battle amongst ourselves. And when I say that, I'm talking about district attorney, I'm talking about sheriff, I'm talking about assessor, I'm talking about clerk of court. And I'm talking about past president. We all guilty. We all working so hard for our departments that we run. We want it to be right. No one runs for office and gets abused to do anything wrong. They, they work the best they can to do the right thing. What we five have to do, district attorney, the sheriff, the assessor, the clerk of court, and the past president, is to figure out how we can work for the benefit of all the citizens in our group and make their money stretch as far as they can go. The problem is there are some agencies get a lot of tax dollars and have surpluses. There's some agencies don't have enough tax dollars to even run the agencies and has no surplus. We have to get together and figure out how we're gonna move our parish forward as a group. We have, we have good schools here. We have good safe communities here. We just need other things to get over the top. We got good libraries, guys. Even though you hear libraries up all the time in, in the news, we got great libraries. These are things that you hear all the time. What we don't have is drainage. What we don't have is good roads. These are things that I'm gonna bring. I just have to get everyone to work together on that. I wanna say that the district attorney, the sheriff, the assessor, the clerk of court has done everything in their powers to make me feel comfortable and to help me move forward. And I want that to be clear. That is very clear. I wanna talk about the parish council. They kinda of took some, I'm not gonna say beat up, but they, they had some horse words that were said about them in the past month or so. Here's some guys, I say it over and over, don't get paid to do their job. And by the way, I'm in favor of them getting more money. They don't get paid to do their job, but they get all the complaints. So if you're a seasoned councilman and you've been there four, eight, 12 years, you know how to handle it, what to expect and what to anticipate. If you're brand new, you don't know those things. You have no idea unless you've been there. So seven months and one week, they have been in office, and I bet you there's not many nights they have been home without their phone ringing off the hook or going to a gas station without somebody beating them up or somebody saying something to their children. I want to tell you that this council deserves a round of applause for what they do, and please give it to them now. They are very good. I'm gonna close this up now. I know I, I've, I've been trying to look at my watch without nobody catching me. But basically I gotta talk about the staff. My staff was brand new for the most part. They had one thing in common, a lot of enthusiasm. But they were like me, green. They never been past president, I've never been past president. So they were green. But their enthusiasm makes up for it. The same words I said about the council, I can say about the staff except I feel they get paid justly. We're not giving them no raises. <laughs>
The point I want to make with the staff, though, I really appreciate y'all. I'm not going to call you out individually. I see the table full over there. I see another table there. The staff has went above and beyond. When 5 o'clock comes, you can go in there. You're going to see five people still working. When Saturdays come, I guarantee you're going to see Gail all day long working. You can, those people don't get paid for that. That is wanting to give back to the citizens. And I appreciate you. I really do. Well, this is it, guys. I'm going to take a few questions. But before I do that, I wouldn't be fair without introducing my lovely wife and saying how much she's the rock for me. I come here, and I, and I open my soul. I bear myself to y'all. There's not a job in the world I'd rather do than this job. I hear people say all the time, how you can put up with that? How you do all that? And I, when I say seven days, it's seven days. And very seldom is it not 14 hours. Very seldom is it not 14 hours. I am so proud to be your representative as parish president. It gives me goosebumps right now. Right now I have goosebumps. We all one people here in Livingston Parish. We all want the same thing. We just got to go about it the right way, guys. Am I the perfect leader? I don't know, but I'm going to continue to try to be that guy. Am I going to be the guy that's going to move us forward? I'm going to be the guy that's going to listen to you. And that's you going to move us forward. You're going to move us forward. And I'm going to listen to you. And I appreciate that, guys. Any questions? Guys, again, I want to reiterate, I've came to a couple of these, and I've never seen this many people. That means you're taking your parish back over, and I appreciate it. Thank you.